Welcome back. WPP Scan Group has notified its shareholders of the ongoing delay in publishing an audited financial statements for the first half of this year, which were due on the 31st of last month. Now, the company posted the audited end year 2020 results on the first month of, on, on the first, um, month of uh, this year. Yes. Now the board said it would publish the unaudited financial statements for the six months ending at 30th June 2021 on or before 30th of September. In its full financial report for the year ended 31st December 2020, WPP Scan Group posted a loss of 1.732 billion shillings. The company said the loss had been anchored on high operating and administrative expenses and greater impairments in the period. Now, the marketing firm also announced that it had cleared its former executives of gross misconduct accusations leveled against them. Let's look at that profitability trend for WPP Scan Group, and you'll actually see that they've been on a loss uh, making it uh, just on, on that area from, 20, from 2017 to 2020. That's exactly how they ended it. But then if you factor that, then you're going to say that indeed they had an, an operating loss of 1.732 uh, billion. All right, let's look at exactly how they closed yesterday. And you will see that under the top gainers, WPP is starting today at 5.56. That's a 9.88% change in that particular stock from the day before yesterday. All right, Churchill, let's begin from there. When you look at the news that we're getting from uh, WPP, fine, you would look at it and then say they have absorbed the CEO and the CFO of any misconduct that would have led for them to change this particular result. But this result is on the negative. That's one way. Deloitte which was an independent auditor in that result they gave us at the end of the year. They said they could not give us a substantive statement on that result because it was in contravention of IFRS standards. There were other five subsidiaries that were not particular, uh, particularly included in that result by WPP. Churchill, that is negative. That's a negative sentiment across the board. But then why are we seeing that rally of WPP on the local books? Well, a couple of things you mentioned there. Uh, but uh, looking at the financials, as you talked about, uh, it had uh, the continuing operations, netting off the operations that were sold out, uh, those four businesses that were sold in last year yes and uh, looking at the auditor's opinion in regards to one works uh this is a business that has some significant stake but not a controlling stake in these five companies uh most of them in the central african and also the west african period and yet you are not able to get uh financials from these businesses matthew you have a stake of between 20 percent to 50 percent that's significant that tells us volumes about how uh, this company is and in relations to its associates. It's not like uh, it had like a 5% or 1% stake in those businesses, quite significant, but yet it's not. All those are negatives, uh, the financials and also this specific item about its relations with associates. Yes. But nonetheless, I think that the investors uh, were looking at, uh, I think they tended to associate the investigations uh, that have been announced in February, uh, something, uh, that particular investigations to have a negative significant, uh, to be the overrider, uh, even in the, over and above its financials. But because of that exoneration, so investors were like, okay, there's a deep sigh of re relief, and that is what you've seen even in the price action. Yes. Some in financials for lack. I think uh, going forward, uh, the, the half year results have been delayed. Uh, but that is where we can be. Human risks, looking at it from the perspective that the CEO, the CFO had resigned in that. 
impacts. Clients, if some of the clients who were in relation to the key personnel in the company, perhaps they decided not to do business with them. So perhaps the one and the first half results will be quite telling to the extent of the positive of the resignation of these two key personnel in the company. Yes. Pretty much, I'll be coming back to you again, Churchill, with that as well. Let me cross over to Rodney as well, so that he can actually also give us his sentiments. Rodney, you hear what Churchill is saying? Churchill is also trying to understand. In fact, what is he is casting as passion as to why now this rally continues despite this negative sentiments and statements that we've, we've been getting from that particular company? Would you also weigh in on that? What would you think? That there's that rally in that particular stock despite everything that's going on in that company. Half year results delayed, full year results delayed. Deloitte is also telling us they cannot give us a substantive statement because then it's in contravention of IFSRS. But despite everything, Rodney, I mean, there's a company that added 28% to that particular stock. In fact, in terms of value, 445 million since they gave us that negative result. So, what's going on? To start with, I'd like to say that uh, I share my views with Churchill yes. um, in the sense that there are some factors that are concerning uh, where when we look at companies, um, quality of management is a really important factor. Yes. So when you have certain scenarios uh, where you have your top guy resigning and it's concerning um, when you look at how the company is uh, set to perform. But given the pandemic and how things are been for the past year or so i believe uh, then believe there is still value in the company that is debatable uh, as to what the company does how they are able to recover from all the ravages we've seen so i'm also uh, keen to see where this um, rally is coming from although it might just be uh, market dynamics. Yes. Ideally. So we can give it a couple of uh, weeks just to see the actual pricing of uh, this specific company, given um, all the, um, I'd say, circumstances they're going through. Pretty much. Rodney, I also, I also love the fact that you're also trying to place it somewhere and you're saying that this rally might be short term. Rodney, just quickly though, quickly though, before we move on to Churchill uh, this morning, the absolving of the CEO and the CFO, is that enough for us to do something different in this company, knowing very well that the equity position for this company is also not good, Rodney? True, true. Uh, it is concerning as I've highlighted. So, um, you know, when you have an organization, all right we seem to have uh, lost so room. giving yes. it time so that you see what unfolds is that uh, yes. the best um, move going forward pretty much all right chat him let's then understand exactly what moment also be sending a positive sentiment uh, in the market right now they also announced that they intend to restructure its um, balance sheet by writing off losses and its subsidiaries in fact the ones that may be deloitte did i like that that were in contribution of IFR, of ifrs through cash already available in their balance sheet how would this improve the ability to pay dividends and can we understand the route that they are taking this, creating a reserve major account? Hold on. But even as they plan to do that, is it also okay for us to look at what profits they could have made then if we are not accounting for their operational losses? Because we don't understand. It could be to the tune of 425, 429 million. But then the overall ones are 1 1.732 M. How do we understand this plan that they have, uh, Churchill? Uh, it's now um, 
in the event now in the future they now account for these uh, write-offs in the associates yes uh, it now boils down to forms uh so that they can be able to account for that because of the cash it's quite uh, significant that they need to account for the, the write-offs and in the event that uh, the businesses uh, the business even going forward is not performing uh, satisfactory so it will be a dip in their equity position right now i think uh, their equity is at 5.2 billion still healthy level but now as they come in and uh, start dipping in their equity uh, reserves at least to account for these write-offs uh, it will now lead to a complete uh, right uh, decline in the equity position and also the balance sheet so it's uh, they have to take it cautiously but i think it's a uh, uh, it's time they now just cut their losses in their associates if they're not in a position to account for the uh, financials of their associates uh, so it's a prudent move it's a painful one nonetheless but uh, it's one that it could be able to come even the investors now as they now transition into a new uh, leaner business uh, going forward pretty much Gentlemen, if you allow me, we take three minutes and go through the last issue this morning. But Kenya's private sector has experienced a setback in its growth, according to the latest purchase and managers index PMI by Stanbeck Bank, that indicated a fall in an index for the straight month from 51 in June to 50.6 in July. Now, according to the survey, weaker expansions in output, new orders, employment, purchasing, and high inflation contributed to the slow growth. Agriculture, construction, and services recorded growth, while manufacturing and wholesale and retail witnessed a downfall. Additionally, the changes in tax rules introduced at the beginning of the financial year resulted in an increase in input costs at the start of the third quarter. Now, the tax rule changes coupled with a high cost of fuel and material shortages also saw the rates of purchase price go up. With the recovery of market conditions and business environments, business confidence improved to a five-month high in July as firms remain optimistic about plans to expand to new branches and increase their advertising. Let me bring in a Woodney this morning. Woodney, that in the private sector, we have dropped for the second month in a ball. From where you sit at this morning, what other factors are we um, looking well, at that might be leading to this? Well, uh, regarding the PMI, I believe, uh, so normally an indication of above 50 uh, points towards an improvement. For the past four months, we've been improving. Yes. Um, that is, uh, I'd say like the figures for August that have just come out are at 51.1. So that is better. Quite unfortunate that we seem to be having problems uh, with um, Rodney's connection this morning. Let me cross over to Churchill. Churchill, quick sentiments. Uh, well, when you look at the PMI, that's a second drop um, in a row. From when you see it this morning again, I mean, they point out to a lot of factors. They've been pointing out to inflationary adjustments. and They've been pointing out to the resumption of the taxation measures at the start of this financial year as the ones that are still eating into the growth of the private sector but even if you look at the credit growth to the private sector churchill again you're going to see we're still struggling in the single digit margins how pertinent are these issues in the growth of the private sector in a 2021 yeah uh if i may start it off i, I may start off with the latest uh, pmi print that is for the month of uh, august which uh so a slight rebound uh from 50.6 in the month of july to 51.1 so that was a slight rebound yes. and uh, the trend uh from april april is when we saw that pmi print uh going down on account of what was there uh, we had the green the reintroduction of the uh, the uh, containment measures for them uh, between the late April all the way to early May, so that led to that decline uh, below 50, which is now showing contractionary. But in the month between May all the way to August, at least that print has been above 50, uh, but now in a slower pace. 
So having said that, and we have to look at the PMI, it's acronym for Purchasing Managers Index. So it's yes. talking about how the private sector and its nexus to the uh, purchases of either their goods and also the interaction with customers. So there are a few um, indices that accompanies the PMI. We're talking about the new uh, order, which has a 30% weighting uh, of factors. Uh, regarding the orders is things to do with cash flows by businesses or even customers. If there is increased cash flow, they start appetite to increase even their orders. We also have outputs, output by the private sector. If there is increased orders, they also increase their output. And that sub-index, 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 index, index has been on an uptrend for the last four months uh, since that April decline. Uh, we also go to employment still on a sustainable uptrend as workload as workload has increased in the private sector that has led to scope of the private sector businesses to bring on board other employers. Yes. So the biggest components that we bring are the PMI to where it was at 51.1 uh, in the month of August. Pretty much. All right, Woodney, let, let's look at it then. When you look at some mm. of these factors that are getting mentioned here in terms of business confidence and also that marginal growth as well, despite that improvement, do we expect that this would continue then? Because 2021 was seen as the recovery year for the economy. Would you call this a recovery? What was your outlook for the private sector? Feedback, you're breaking a bit. Yes, Rodney, can you hear me now? Sorry, I have a... <laughs> yes, I can hear you now. Ah, fantastic. So could you give us your outlook then for the private sector, given these major factors that um, the PMI is pointing out? Management with Churchill on this similarly. So as highlighted, We've seen uh, an improvement in terms of customer demand. That's also with the improvement in economic activities. So we're seeing a slight improvement in new order reports, where we're seeing up, an uptick in. Uh, so this is also driving the consumer to sort of cater for the backlogs. But ultimately, point, uh, uh, although slow, but gradual in business operating environment. Pretty much. Right. So, uh, the, definitely, of uh, the environment, relation of, is in tax, uh, tax. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Wonne. That's what we have for you this morning. At this time, I would like to say thank you very much to Churchill for making time this morning. And also, Rodney, who have been with us all the way from 8 to 9. We're looking at those major headlines that we're waking up to. So you do know how we're opening up. WPP is still rallying. And according to Rodney, it might be short term. He's saying, well, hold on. Let's wait and see what's going to happen before we can actually make the final decision on exactly what is happening on that particular last talk thank you very much for being with us you can take those two gentlemen and rosemary back to the time that you join us today in the morning in the studio at metropole tpke across all your social media platforms my name is simba elijah charles Kiange. good morning